repeat themselves. And so it's about how do you insulate yourself from the macro environment so that you're not triggering your fear, you're not triggering your nervous system, you're not trying to control other people or control situations to create the outcome that you desire, and then you wind up somewhere else. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am here to help you get past the piece of money consuming your life, your emotions, your mental state, your job security, your marriage. If money is consuming your being because it puts you in some level of fear, you're going to want to hang on for this conversation because mm, I'm going to get you through it. You know, I've spent the last 25 plus years being a financial planner and it's time for us all to get to this place of abundance. So don't forget, hit that subscribe, like, and notification bell. Why? Because I'm going to help you get to a life that you absolutely love. And if you're loving my videos, be sure to go to juliemurphy.com. Get on my email list because I'm now starting to do group coaching um, so that I can help you guys get to that life that you absolutely love. So let's dive in here on this whole thing about money consuming you. Um, there's so many elements to that, right? It could be consuming you through the debt levels that you have. It could be consuming you because you're worried about what's going in the macro environment at large. Like right now, as I'm making this video, it's the uh, Ukraine, Russia, and inflation. And you're like, ah, what do I do? So it's a macro environment the environment outside of yourself that's creating some of that. It can consume your marriage. I mean, the number one reason why people get divorced is money. And so money is just consuming your relationship. How about even with your kids? I've had people tell me like, yeah, uh, I can't get them out of my basement or I can't get them, you know, because the children have not learned to build their financial muscles or they're like spending all the time and you're financially bailing them out. And so there's different layers of how money can consume you. And what I want to share with you is that it's just this underlying fear. That's where it all comes from. And so there's a couple things that, and tools I'm going to give you as we chat here briefly of how to detach from that consuming nervousness, fear-based scarcity-based side of money. And, you know, it really doesn't matter if you make uh, $50,000 a year or if you're making $250,000 a year. And it doesn't matter if you have um, no assets and all debt. And it also doesn't matter if you've got a million dollars plus in assets. What I've noticed is that it hits all of us. And the question is, is where does it hit you? I look at people being in different categories. There's people financially who are poor. There are people financially who are what I call debtors. They stay in that debt cycle and struggle. Then there's the dreamers who kind of do what I call the hybrid method. They're kind of bouncing between being a debtor and accumulator and they just can't get out of their way, but they're trying to get to the other side. Then there's the accumulators, people who are income affluent, but not yet fully asset affluent, but they still dabble in the debt stuff, and but it doesn't consume their life as much. And then there's what I call rich but empty. Anyone who is poor, debtor, dreamer, accumulator, they all believe that, oh, if I do this, 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 and then I accumulate all this money, then huh, life is going to be good. I'm here to tell you that um, I have a lot of rich but empty clients that when they first came to me, because they weren't addressing the core issue that was creating the unhappiness along the way or the fear along the way, which is why money consumes us, because it's what creates, helps to facilitate our life, right? It's a tool in the world that we all use, and there's either a lack thereof or not. And 
there's not, you can have what I call real wealth all along the way. Money does not have to consume you. Money does not have to be this monkey on your back, whether it's you're working too much and not making enough money and you're not getting the promotions, you're not getting the pay raises. Like which story is yours or your spouse spends like a, you know, just like it's going out of style or you're a hoarder because you're always afraid that something's going to happen and something's going to fall out and you're trying to protect yourself. And what I want to teach you here is that money is consuming you because you're trying to control your stress. And you think that by controlling your money, controlling the other people around you, mitigating your fears, or you're people pleasing, or you're in training others to do it your way, whether it's the employees that you work for or the families that you live in. This is how it all comes from our stress levels. And God knows the last few years, we've had more than enough opportunities to pick on a menu what we want to be stressed about, right? And this is why money is consuming you. And when you live long enough, I just had somebody say to me today, well, you know, I figure I have 22 more years left because when I was 22, it was the exact same environment right now. There was a potential of war going on. There was inflation the way that it is pushing today. And it's like, you live long enough, you start to see that these cycles repeat themselves. And so it's about how do you insulate yourself from the macro environment so that you're not triggering your fear. You're not triggering your nervous system. You're not trying to control other people or control situations to create the outcome that you desire. And then you wind up somewhere else because you're going to focus more on abundance as opposed to scarcity. So how do we do that? You know, I talked at the beginning that I'm going to show you a couple tools. So I have a couple tools written down here for you. The first one is, when it's consuming you, break it down into bite-sized pieces. You know, if we're just talking money, you can look at your money in three different ways. It could be your financial past, and those are your debts, meaning that in the present moment, you're making decisions, and if you take on debt, then you're paying for those past decisions that you've made in the present moment. So that's your financial past. Then you have money in the present moment. This is the cash flows. If you've listened to any of my stuff, I always tell people, will you please take the word budget out of your vocabulary? Like out, 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 out. Why? Because it's limiting and it's restricting and it puts you more in a place where money, you're consumed by money because emotionally you want to expand, you want to grow, and you want to do these things. And you should. But don't do them at your cost to where you create a lead balloon of debt. That's where the tweaking actually needs to happen for the majority of people out there. And again, I don't care if you're making $50,000 a year or $250,000 a year. I see this pattern with everybody. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Because the majority of people have debt lines. And you might BS yourself and tell you, well, but Jewel, it's good debt. You know what? If you have to wake up today and pay for yesterday, that ain't good. Because that's not allowing you to live in a mo present moment to create the future that you want to create. It's pigeonholing you. It's holding you hostage. It's like a little jail cell. Yeeks! Nobody wants that. This is why it's consuming us because it's always not enough, not enough, not enough, not enough, not enough. And then it triggers your not enough button from your subconscious mind, your emotional processing that somehow got created when you were a kid. There's lots of videos on that stuff. Check them out. They're on my channel. I talk about the subconscious mind all the time. It's your subconscious mind, which is why you feel consumed by your debt. So let's break it down to bite-sized pieces. Your financial past, make a list of them. List out all those debts. Financials in the present moment, income coming in, expenses going out. And come from a proactive place once you have these bite-sized pieces to say, do I choose today to still have all that money going out to those places that I had before? I had this one client one time and she came in and she said, Jewel, I do not want to do um, 
you're not taking away my cable bill. And I was like, okay. But she was like adamant about it. I was like, all right, enough of the cable bill, but all right. I go, what gives on the cable bill? And she's like, well, I work a lot. I travel a lot. I'm a consultant and blah, 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 blah. She gave me all very defensive. And I go, well, what is it that you like about it? And it was just the fact that she wasn't married. She didn't go out. She wasn't a drinker. She didn't go to the bars. She didn't socialize like that. When she was home traveling, from traveling, from all of her consulting work, she liked to just come home and watch movies on her TV because that was her form of entertainment. And no one was taking that from her. And so we, I go, you know what? I gave her an exercise and I said, could you do me a favor? Can you just go list out all the movies that you watch over the next two months? So we looked and I go, hmm. And this was before Netflix and streaming. And we found that she watched about, you know, eight movies a month. So I said, you know, we could move to on demand as opposed to having all the movie channels. And we saved her about 200 bucks a month. So then in the present moment, so look at those cash flows you have and see if something needs to be tweaked. If you haven't tweaked your phone bill recently, like your cell phone bill, those things get more effective every year. There might be things that you have automatically charged on your credit card every month that you're going, why do I have that 30 bucks going on every month? And I don't really use it anymore. So, okay, get rid of it. It's about, you can start to have money stop consuming you when you actually start to take some of those opportunities in your cash flows and redirect them to something that actually funds the life that you want to create, which is the third bucket for you to kind of look at what your money's all about. And that's building the future you want. Have that money for your future. Seed your intentions because that doesn't feel like then you're being consumed by your money, that it's like dictating how you're plugging into the world. So, Take a look at your financial past. Maybe you can um, look at getting debts at lower rates so your payments go down and that increase in payment or decrease in payment can then shift over to another place. It's a great time to do it right now. So I certainly hope that this was helpful and I look forward to helping you on your journey. Don't forget, subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell because I'm going to help you get to a life that you love. You just have to come along for the ride. And if you go to my website, juliemurphy.com, sign up because whether it's my coaching classes, um, I actually just finished writing my third book, which I'm super excited about. So that'll be coming out in the next month or so. And my Awaken Your Wealth book, one I actually have up here on the wall. Um, actually, uh, I have a book funnel. You can have the book for free. Why? Because um, I want to collaborate with you. So I paid for the printing and all that. You just have to pay for the shipping. And I want to get you to a life that you absolutely love. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye.